Hello, everybody. My name is Klaus Kambach. I'm a cardiac surgeon at the, uni at the um, uh, ENCCE, the National Institute of Cardiac Surgery in Luxembourg, and I'm also professor for cardiac surgery in Heidelberg. Um, well, I'm talking about the basics of um, aortic root surgery or aortic surgery in um, muffin patients. Um, first, the agenda. Uh, I'm speaking about the diagnosis, about the indication for surgical therapy. Uh, I will talk about the elective surgical th therapy of the aortic root, um, about the acute aortic dissection type A, and uh, about the question, should we do a combined arch replacement when we operate on the ascending aorta? Next slide, please. So we are speaking about the diagnosis now. Um, the diagnosis has been uh, described by different, next slide please. You now, you all know the revised GAN, no, go back please, Margaret. Okay, um, you all probably know the revised GAN criteria. The criteria was set up in 2010 and they help us to make the diagnosis for MARFA. And when you look at all these details, the aortic size always plays an important role. And this is because it's not that easy just to uh, explain by the size of the aorta if somebody has MARFA um, syndrome or not. And uh, it's very heterogenic. Marfan doesn't mean class Marfan. And I will show it in the next slide. Next slide, please. For example, this lady, it's, it's clear to everybody who is uh, having context to Marfan. This is a cl cl classical uh, a case of Marfan syndrome. But the next one, please. Um, this gentleman was one of the best basketball players picked for the NBA in the, market, in the United States from, from France. And when he got his uh, preliminary checkup, he was found to have Marfan syndrome. He was an act active, very good sportsman. And there's another one who, who is the best swimmer ever uh, swum so far, uh, Michael Phelps. He it is speculated at least, maybe this guy has also Marfan. It has never been proven and nobody knows exactly. It's very heterogenic and um, it's, very important to, to look closer to the mutations. For example, if we have here different mutations of the FBN1 genome causes uh, different diseases. For example, the uh, mutation of uh, W1570C uh, results in this stiff skin syndrome. And as, as the word already said, the skin is very stiff. In contrast, the 8AA deletion uh, causes a wild Marchesani syndrome, which is exactly the opposite, very elastic skin. So it depends definitely on the, um, on the mutation, what kind of Marfan you have, and also what kind of vascular disease you have. Next slide, please. Um, so the key problem is actually, how can different mutations, FBN1, cause long or short bone, stiff or stretchy skin, big or small, uh, um, I cannot read everything, and aortic aneurysms or no, not no aortic dilatation, and this is true. There are definitely differences in the patients, and uh, we have to look at that. Next slide, please. The indication for surgery, well, it has been established in the guidelines, both of the American and the European uh, Cardiac and Cardiac Surgery Societies. Next slide. Um, this is uh, the recommendation of the 2014 ESC, European Society of Cardiology Guidelines. It just came in a new one, but it's, the recommendations are quite similar. So surgery, if you look at the first line, surgery is indicated in patients who have aortic root aneurysm with maximal aortic diameter 50 millimeters for patients with Marfan syndrome. This is a class one recommendation that has very strong recommendation that the, the authors um, uh, assume that this is absolutely beneficial, but the level of evidence is C. So there is actually almost no data existing to prove if this is true. And this is also true for the next line. Surgery should be considered in patients who have aortic root aneurysm with maximal ascending aortic diameters of 45 for patients with Marfan syndrome with risk factors, such like family members who already uh, had an 80 sections or patients of 50 millimeters with bicuspid valve 
or 55 for other patients. Again, this is a level C recommendation. And uh, lower th thresholds for intervention may be considered according to different factors. It's just a 2B. Three means it might be helpful. 2B doesn't means, well, we do not really know exactly. It might be beneficial. And again, it's a level C recommendation. So you can see the scientific background for setting the indication for operation is not very strong. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So when you look at the American guidelines, it said that five, point, five uh, centimeter of the aortic root or the aortic uh, ascending aorta is the indication for operation. Uh, pa next, patients with uh, uh, genetically mediated disorders, and this is also true for MAF. No, go back, please. Can you go back, please? So for, for patients with Marfan syndrome, uh, it should be uh, considered at four to five centimeter, depending on the conditions. And the next slide is showing the conditions. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. No. <laughs> Next slide, please. Does not work. Okay. So, um, in, in case, in, uh, in, if you have a Lloyd Steed syndrome uh, with a proven mutation in the receptor, uh, otic diameter of 4.2 with the uh, echo of 4.4 to 4.6 in a CT scan is actually setting the, the indication for surgery. So, next slide. There are different recommendations that are quite similar but they are not very precise. There is an, an, an gray zone. Next slide, please. So uh, when, when you look, at, no, is this one too far? So our recommendations are graded um, class, uh, class one or two A, which is beneficial, but evidence levels is only C. So this is based on, on retrospective studies or even only on, on um, expert uh, uh, consensus and no uh, randomized controlled studies have been done. The scientific basis for this recommendation is a very weak study, I must say, from Cody from 1997 with 54 heterogenic patients who, who developed an acute aortic dissection and they were looking at which time point the risk of developing um, the dissection is, is given as a recommendation. But it's not really a very good study. So it, on the contrary, several studies have demonstrated that more than 50 patients are, develop aortic dissection already with a diameter less than 5.5 centimeter. And there is actually no scientific background data for Marfan patients. So the, on the other hand, the operative risk for root replacement in elective patients and experience surgical centers is today one to 2%. And if you look at the next slide, you must think of, of uh, the balance of the risk of judgment. You have the risk of acute aortic dissection, which is very dif difficult to judge, but you have the surgical risk and the surgical risk is getting lower and lower uh, during the last 20 years. And today with one to 2%, the risk is lower than actually for a bypass, coronary bypass surgery. Next slide. So taken together, the indication for aortic root surgery in, in regard to the American guidelines is four to five centimeters for Marfan syndromes. Um, in my opinion, this is the opinion of most surgeons and experienced centers. The indication for operation is five and confirmed Marfan syndrome. The op operation indication is uh, already at four, five centimeters for Lloyd's Deed syndrome, wish for pregnancy, severe aortic insufficiency, or aort acute aortic dissection and type A in family history. And the future aim is actually to do, to do more research on uh, genome phenotype uh, connection and finding individual factors that can that allow an, an, an um, stratification of the risk for any individual person. So this personalized medicine. But today we are not at that point so far. Next slide, please. 
So we talk about elective surgical therapy of the arteric root and this, the goal of this, why do we do this surgery is to avoid a type A aortic dissection. Everybody who is listening today must understand that the type A dis dissection is a disaster. It's the initial uh, uh, mortality of this disease is more than 60%. And those who survived acute aortic dissections will have the rest of the life problems with the aorta. So if you see this picture here with this uh, white aortic root, with, which is kind of like an onion tower in, in Bavaria on the churches, then um, this is very typical for Marfan. And if this reaches more than 4.5 centimeters, or up to five, you, an operation should be definitely be considered. Next slide. So this is the way how it looks. This is the aorta here in front with an aneurysm of the aortic root and uh, above there is the pulmonary artery. And this is a very typical picture of a Marfan syndrome. You, you see uh, the aorta, the upstream aorta above the root is quite narrow, but the root itself is expanded. This is um, on, almost a patognetic for, patognomic for Marfan patients. And patients, for example, who have bicuspid aortic valve, the um, uh, aneurysm is much, much higher in the aorta. It's more in the middle of the aorta ascending. So this is typical Marfan. Next slide, please. So there's another effect of this dilatation of the aortic root. It leads to expansion of the uh, commissures that are carrying the aortic valve. And then you develop just by, by, um, by expanding the root and insufficiency of the valve. The leaflets themselves are actually not, not hampered, not at all. But since the root, uh, the wall of the root uh, disappears to the side, uh, in the middle of the valve, you have no connection anymore, and then you get an aortic valve insufficiency. And this can also be an indication for operation by itself. Next slide. So what operative therapy strategies do we have? Well, we have the supracommissional replacement where we just replace the ascending aorta. A conduit is of course the first method developed by De Bono and Bentel in, in 69, where you implant a uh, valve carrying conduit and replacing both the ascending aorta and the valve by itself. And since 1993, we have two other uh, valve sparing methods, the Yakub me uh, method, the remodeling method, or the David the reimplantation method. Next slide. The supracommissional uh, strategy is definitely not suited for Marfan patients, okay? This is definitely not the right therapy, neither in a dissection nor an elective surgery. So today we are speaking for Marfan patients only about uh, the Bentel operation or the uh, valve sparing operation. So we, if we compare this both techniques, uh, already 10, 10 years ago, everybody, especially in America, was thinking we should do a De Bono operation, but we need an anticoagulation. Here in the valve sparing procedure, here is a uh, David procedure, we do not need any anticoagulation. And if you consider that most of the patients who get operated are in their third life decade, they have to live for the rest of life let's say another 50 years uh, with anticoagulation. And this is not that easy. Next slide. So what is about the durability? If the durability of this procedure, the valve sparing procedure is as good, no, go, well, as good as the uh, durability of an Bonta operation, it might be, uh, uh, might be um, meaningful to do a remodeling procedure. So the first study about that is this study of Benedetto, who did a uh, uh, systematic review and meta-analysis of the literature with 14 different papers. Next slide, please. Next, hit it again, please. So uh, when taken together, there are in this uh, meta-analysis, there are more re, uh, re on the aortic valve after valve sparing procedures. These are 1.3 operations versus 0.3 operations with a banter per year. Next. The thrombolytic events, on the other hand, are much more frequent after composite replacement, after the banter operation, where you have 
most of time a um, biological or mechanical wolf. And this age actually a me mechanical wolf. Next. Uh, there is no difference between the two techniques if you compare all complications from thrombolic events and reoperations. And next, please. There are less reoperations after the David operation than in comparison to the Yakub operation. And this difference is quite big. So there was the first report that probably in Marfan patients, the David operation is a better choice than the Yakub operation. Next slide, please. Next, please. Um, there are two problems with this study. There is no data about bleeding complications and bleeding complications are the most often observed problems for anticoagulation. And uh, this follow-up was only 6.5 years. There's another study here uh, from Price that is going, uh, this is uh, much more modern. It's from, from 16. Hit again the button, please. Hit it, please. Mug it. Okay, and, and the, the result, no, go back, please. It's not, not an, another slide. Okay. Uh, the most important um, result of the study that there was no independent difference in long-term survival, freedom from reoperation or freedom from endocarditis between the two procedures. And they compared the Bantel versus the aortic valve sparing procedure. So this was, one very important study that we're showing with a, well, not big um, amount of, of uh, patients in a cohort that there is no difference in, in the term of longevity. But on, don't forget the De Bono operation needs anticoagulation. Next slide, please. Well, yeah, so there is a uh, much bigger study also and a systematic review and meta-analysis uh, more recent uh, with 2,976 Marfan patients. Next, uh, hit it again, please. No, I, there was an underlining, please go backwards. Okay, um, the last sentence, well, it, it's actually showing the last sentence, importantly there when was no significant difference in re-intervention rates between valve sparing operation and the Bento operation. And this is in a study of 2,900 Marfan patients. So this is quite uh, convincing data. Now the next slide, please. And when you look at this in, 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 a, in a Kaplan-Meier curve, you see that there is slightly less uh, reoperation in the remodeling group than in the Bento group. So there is now stronger evidence that the uh, valve sparing procedure, the David procedure, is in terms of, of durability as good as the Bantel operation. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And, and there's another study of, uh, in, from Germany. It's actually four different, uh, four different centers. And hit it again, please, once. So the early survival of this procedure, this is just about the David operation, was 98% in, in, four in 1,000 patients in four different centers. So this is quite excellent. Next, hit it again, one more time, please. And it's showing that the um, remodeling type David II, this is the, uh, um, the Yakub operation, has, was a risk factor for earlier uh, wall failure. So, this study was also showing that the David operation has a be better longevity than the, than the um, um, Yakub operation. Next, please. And very imp important for, for uh, Marfan patients is that Marfan syndrome, the existence of Marfan syndrome has no impact on the, neither on the survival nor on the stability of the valve replacement. So this technique can be, uh, uh, can be, applied to, to patients with Marfan syndrome as well as to patients with no part Marfan uh, syndrome. Because 10 years ago, the Americans were saying, no, you should not do a wolf sparing procedure to Marfan patients because there is a structural problem of the tissue. Next slide, please. And one interesting work is from, from Hannover. They were actually the first one uh, who started to do a large series of, of David operations. Next, please. 
Next slide, please. And uh, hit it once again. Uh, freedom from Arctic wildfire uh, reoperation was 86% at 10 years and 80% at 20 years. These are the longest follow up data uh, so far uh, taken. And the reoperation rate was similar in Marfan and non Marfan patients. So, again, Marfan syndrome was not a risk factor. Next slide, please. We're coming to, now to aortic dissection. Um, aortic dissection, if this happens, I feel always like, like being a little bit guilty when I'm taking care of Marfan patients because I see my job as a cardiac surgeon to avoid that, to operate at the right time point to avoid that an aortic dissection happens. However, the numbers of dissections and Marfan syndrome are going further down from year to year because the surveillance of the doctors in the land and the country are much, much better than, than 10 or 20 years ago. Marfan patients are presented much, much earlier, identified much earlier than in the, in, the, in the years before. However, it still happened that acute aortic dissection type A uh, developed in Marfans, and then we have to treat that. Next slide, please. So this is the picture of an, an, an dissection. You see the typical blue ascending aorta, which means the dissection. And here on the right hand, you can see what happens. It, it, it gets a rupture in the intima layer and the blood went into the medial layer and, and lifts up actually and falls lumen. And this falls lumen went down very much down to most of time to the bifurcation of the aorta to the legs. So it's not only this part that you can see in, our, in, in the uh, picture, it's the, most of time the whole aorta that is actually split up. So that means the whole aorta is now weakened in a patient who has anyway already patient, uh, problems with the aorta. So we try to avoid that. Next slide. And the outcome of uh, uh, acute aortic dissection needs to be operated. If you look at this data from the IRET, this is the International Registry of Acute uh, of Aortic Dissection. The red line means patients who are treated medically. And you see this, this steep curve uh, of, of uh, mortality. So after, after um, 18 days or after f f uh, presentation, more than 50% of patients died. When you look at type A dissection, this is the, the, uh, the yellow line, you see that uh, by the operation, when it's, it's surgically treated, um, uh, the outcome is much, much better in comparison to medical treatment. So it's very clear and type A dissection has to be operated and it has to be rated, operated as soon as possible because everybody assumes that the mortality is 1% per hour. So after 24 hours, um, it's very likely then that 24% uh, of patients who, who had um, a dissection died. Next slide, please. And this is a study from, from uh, Gerada, German Registry of Acute Aortic Dissection Type A, the worldwide largest one. And you see the most of the patients are operated with an um, with an supracommissional replacement, the method that should not be applied to uh, Marfan patients because the, the weakened aortic root is keeps still in place. If you see here at the blue one, 7% of patients are operated with the David procedure and 2% with the Yaku procedure. So only 9% are operated with a valve sparing situ, uh, procedure in a type A dissection. Well, not everybody with a type A dissection needs a valve sparing procedure, but it is very important that you will be able to do this procedure even in an emergency like a type A dissection in malformed patients. Uh, many surgeons say, well, no, this is too risky because um, this is an emergency and the David procedure is much, much more difficult than a supercommissional replacement. So I just go for the easy way to, to keep the patient alive, just to bring him out of the operation theater alive. But now surgeons started to investigate, is that really true? Do you have a better outcome if you take the simple operation, if you avoid David or procedure? So next slide. So this is the, uh, the uh, outcome of 1,600 patients in the Garada. And if, if you see here, the overall mortality after 30 days is uh, about 16%. And in the David group, it's less than 10%. And so, it's just not true 
that you have a worse outcome if you have a more complicated operation. You, you just as a surgeon must feel comfortable to do this operation. If you are trained to do a David and elective cases, you can do it also in a diabetes section. But for a patient, it's very important to get into the hands of a surgeon who is able to do so. So if they are in a type A dissection acute, especially in Marfan syndrome, it's very important that you come to an aortic center that has surgeons who are able to do so. Next slide. So this is a long-term survival. It's a study that, that we have done in, when I was in Hanover. And you see AVR means aortic valve resuscitation or, or um, uh, um, um, preserving techniques. And also in this little study, um, the outcome was, was much better and than, than the outcome, for example, and the other group. So it's, it's definitely possible to do so. Next slide, please. Well, the slide has problems to come up. And this is an, also an interesting study next uh, in Benta versus David in a type A dissection, exactly what I'm talking about. Next slide. And uh, please click once again. So this is again a meta-analysis, okay? Uh, uh, CVG means these are bandal operation and RAV means uh, valve sparing operation. And so you see the in-hospital mortality at 30 days is 8% overall pooled in uh, the, the uh, bantle operation, only 2% um, of all pool percentages in the uh, David, David group. So this study clearly shows that the David procedure is even in this study, even better in the outcome than the composite replacement. Next slide, please. Now the question that is often asked, should we do in Marfan patients the arch? Because as, all, you, you all know that the, the aorta is weakened. And should we do, because, since we are anyway having the chest open and the arches in front of us, should we do an arch replacement combined with the, with the aortic root replacement? Next slide, please. There are uh, reasons to do so and reasons against it. Next slide, please. There is a study of, um, of uh, the group in, uh, in uh, Freiburg. And when you look at the in-hospital mortality was nine, almost 10%, more than 20% and almost 30% for patients who had no hemiarch or total arch replacement. So these are, are patients um, who were operated and received that. And you see that the, the uh, arch replacement has an impact on the in-hospital mortality. Making this in, 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 in easy words, if you expand the operation to the arch, the mortality the chance of mortality increases. So the recommendation of this paper is next slide and uh, hit it again. Um, th they they recommend that the aortic arch repair there can be deferred because it can be performed as a redo procedure with quite good results if necessary at all. And from my experience, and it's not only my experience, Marfan patients do not develop often uh, aneurysms at the aortic root. They do not. So I don't know why I cannot give an explanation. They develop type B dissections, but the aortic root, uh, the aortic arch is often not involved into the disease. So from my experience, it's better if the aortic arch is not uh, involved in the disease visibly in an aneurysm or that section, you should not operate on that. Next slide. Um, so there's another word, this is from China, the famous son who is doing enormous amounts of patients, certainly with a very high elect selection bias. But he said that more extensive surgical strategy can be justified when it is based on circumstances. So he's quite of careful. Mr. Sun is doing in all patients with dissection and, and frozen elephant trunks. So, so placement of the aortic arch and, and stand downwards. He can do this because all patients are in good shape because he has a very high selection. Only health, very, very stable patients are operated. I'm not sure that we can transfer this data from China to Europe, 
And I, I think if the aortic root is not involved directly, we should spare that. Next slide, please. Here, one more uh, um, factor for, for when you compare the TL mortality in the hemia arch group is 18% and the to total arch group is 25%. This is just missing the, the level of uh, significance, but it's, uh, it's, the difference is already uh, visible. Next slide, please. So I would like to conclude first. Autic root aneurysm and malfunctions must be operated on early on. I'm convinced about that. I say at five, 4.5 centimeters, and I know exactly that the official guidelines say five centimeters, but because we are feared of our acute aortic dissection, I'm talking to my patients who are presented to me and explaining the situation. And most of the patients understand that. Next slide. The prediction of individual risk factor is difficult so far. We do not have hard data. Um, genetics are, are working on a phenotype connection, but so far we cannot give clear recommendations. This would be very beneficial. We can say your per individual risk of developing an AD section is lower or higher. Next one. Most Marfan centers prefer the David operation in Marfan patients, and I think this is correct. Next slide. An acute aortic dissection, valve sparing techniques are applicable in young Marfan patients to avoid long term complications due to anticoagulation. Because in the Marfan patient, you have to uh, uh, replace the aortic root. Adequate aortic root tre treatment has in Marfan patients priority. There is an Ongoing dissection in uh, surgeons who are operating dissection, what is more important, the root or the arch? That might be an, an valuable uh, discussion in, in patients uh, with hypertension, but not in malfunctions. And malfunctions, the aortic root is the most important part of the aorta. Next. And aortic arch replacement should only be uh, 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 undertaken in acute aortic dissection in an elective patient with increased risk like Lloyd's Deed syndrome. Next. And if an arch replacement is necessary, a frozen elephant trunk plus separate uh, supraortic branch implantation may be recommended. It is not clear, but most of the surgeons uh, who are operating on malfunctions and who are experienced use the frozen elephant trunk for replacement. Thank you very much.